And today I'm going to do some greetings for cards. I'm going to foil them and then cut them. So first of all, I'm going to start with the text. I'm going to use the font um, Girls Are Weird. Unfortunately, with the scan and cut, either you've got to scroll down at the side or just scroll until you find the one you want. And here I get caught up in the C's instead of the G's. But eventually I'll get down to Girls Are Weird. Uh, and then once I've chosen the font. Now the two sayings I'm going to do is Get Well Soon and Hello. So, um, here we go, girls are weird. I start to type the get, and I just don't like the look of the space between the E and the T. To me, it's too far apart. So, selecting it and just putting where I can see it. I can adjust in the properties menu. You can adjust the spacing. Um, but, um, when I eventually get to the properties menu, I can adjust the character spacing, but that puts the E closer and it really is already close. So I've decided to do this a slightly different way. So here's how you can fix it if you don't like the spacing on your words and that doesn't fix it. Type the word, I'm just going to type G and E, G with a capital G, and E, and separately I'm going to type the T. Okay. <clears throat> now, and to just um, get them all close together and uh, zoom in so that you can see what I do next. I'm keeping the one spaced about because I want to see just where the T sets. Okay, now we'll zoom in. And if we look at it, we'll see that the T lines up with the E. So I've just got to line the bottom with the E. So I've put the E on a line so I can see it. Yes, I'm happy with that. I can't use the um, the properties tools, oh, sorry, the edit tools to bring them all level because the G has a bottom on it as well. If they all had the flat same bottom, I could do that. Okay, so I've typed well soon. Now, to get these all together, what I'm going to do is overlap the E's. They're the same size. I'm going to zoom in so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to overlap the E's so they're in the same position. If I do that, then it's going to be in the right spot. So I've just got to space it so that I'm happy with it. Okay. I can now do all that, go into the Layers menu and group them. And call it Get Well Soon. I tend to like to um, name the layers so I know what they are. Not just call them group. Okay, the other word I was going to do is Hello. So we'll type hello okay and we'll change um, I want to put in a shape around that oh no sorry I'm changing the size first I wanted to keep it to about um, 80 millimeters across because I'm going to put some it's got to be cut around and I'm going to put some value behind it happy with the size of the hollow Okay, so I'm just going to name the text, hello. I'm not going to group um, those layers just yet. I've got a few other things I want to do first. Okay, so let's add a shape. This, this is kind of my favorite shape at the moment, so that's what I'm going to use. And I'm just going to sort of eyeball it on there and get it roughly the size I want. Then I'm going to highlight both and go into the edit menu and align vertically and um, horizontally. Happy with that. And do the same with the hello. But this time I'm going to put a circle on there. And I want a um, scalloped edge circle. So I'm just going to put on there, holding down the shift key and going to the bottom left hand, uh, right hand corner, just moving it around till it's right. Oops. Okay. Center it horizontally and vertically. Don't like it. The, the circle needs to be just a little bit bigger. So I'm just going in and adjusting the size just slightly. Okay. Okay. Happy with that look. Now I'm going to do two of those. So I'm going to copy and paste. And I'm just going to put them roughly how they'll sit together on my mat. Okay. Now. When I'm 
on my mat. I always lay them one inch down and two inches over and I do that so that when I go to cut them I can put them in exactly the same position. So having done that I'm now going to group some of these layers. <clears throat> so we're going to the layer menu. We will take the two hellos and the get well soon by holding down the control key and clicking on the layer. And I'm going to group those and I'm going to call them foiling. Now I'm call, calling them foiling, but I will do another video soon with this same file and using the universal pen holder. I've now selected all the shapes and I'm going to group them and call them the cutting pieces because that's what I know it is. You can call these layers anything you want. You don't have to call them what I call them. Okay. Now, now I want to do a um, bit of vellum around the outside, so I need to cut some vellum. On this particular circle, I don't, I'm going to do an offset layer, an outward 5mm offset layer. I don't like the shape of it, so what I'm going to do is pull it off to the side, check its size, um, and then I'm going to adjust it just slightly. I'm going to make sure I'm happy with it. Yes, that will be fine. Now I'm going to do a, just a normal circle and I'm going to size that at 90 millimeters. I'll just lay that over there. So it's almost exactly the same size, but it doesn't have the rough edge that I wasn't happy with. I'm going to lay that there. I need two of those. So we'll copy and paste. And then I want an, in, um, an, an offset for the get well soon. So again, I go up to that, edit, create offset line, outward, five millimeters, and there it is. So I'm just going to move that over here. Now I'm going to fix these for cutting. So I'll just relay them where they fit. There we go. And I'm going to group that layer and I'm going to call that vellum. Okay, I'm just going to collapse these layers down, except the shapes, because now I want to do an inward offset so that I can do a piece of foam. Now, I, st I tried this shape and did an inward. So I changed it to inward, pressed OK, and didn't like the shape at all. Thought that would be annoying to cut. Let's just go with a circle. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to highlight just the round shape over here that we've already done. But I'm going to make it a 10 millimeter inward one because I've already added 5 millimeters to make it bigger. So I'm going to change it to 10, milli milli 10 millimeters. Oh, sorry, uh, 9, 9 millimeters. And that's going to be big enough and I'll just lay it over there so you can see it's plenty big enough to stick it down. So we want two of those. Oh, not yet. I'm going to do the get well soon first. This is in wood. I forgot to change the setting back. That is too small. It won't sit properly. So Control and Z is a great little tool which is undo if you don't know that. Okay, so let's go down do another offset line and let's change it to five millimeters. There you go, that's a better size. So I'm just gonna put that down here. Put that there and copy it for a second one. I'm going to group those now. And I'm gonna call that layer foam. Now we can collapse our layers, but there is just one thing we haven't done yet and that is our foiling layer is presently a cut line. So we need to go up to the edit menu, line operation and change to draw. You can also do this in the layers menu by clicking on each layer, but you can see they've all changed to draw. So now we have the file all set up. I'm going to save it. We have two choices with saving. You can export it as an FCM or save it as a working file in Canvas. I'm going to show you the difference between the two. So first of all, I'm going to save it as a working file. That's a funny answer. CWPRJ. I'm going to call it 2. As you can see, I was playing with this before. Always have a play before I do a video. 
so I'm just going to call it 2 and I'm going to also export it as an FCM. There is a difference when you bring them in so we'll just have a quick look at those. It's saved it as the same name but as an FCM file. Okay, I'm going to go to File and New. First of all I'm going to import the FCM. And something really strange happened here because I didn't get the duplicate um, items and I'm not sure why. Normally I would. But you can see on the right hand side our groups have lost their names and if I'd colored them I would have lost the colors also. So I prefer if it's something I'm going to use a lot I save it as a working file. So I've got a new board I'm now opening the um, working file and there we go you can see I've got all the layers the names have stayed the same and if they were colored the colors would stay the same um, and I can just collapse them down and that's just one little click on each layer and it's done. So um, if I'm going to be using something frequently, that's what I do, save it as a working file. Now, you, if you toggle the eye on each layer, I'm going to do the foiling layer first. I'm going to send it to my machine. It tells me that it won't send hidden objects, which is exactly what I want. Once I've done that, I'm going to turn, on the cut, turn off the foiling, turn on the cutting pieces and send that. When I finish that, I'm going to send the vellum pieces. Now, these I'm going to move because that's where I'll put the paper. And I'm going to transfer that to my machine. Again, it's telling me I won't send the hidden pieces. Now I'm going to just hit Control and Z or use the undo button and just move it back where it was. Turn it off. Turn on the foam. I'm going to set the foam up. Now I always set my foam a little in and down just so I've got room to glue it, if, um, tape it down if I need to. So I can transfer that to my machine and there's the foam. And there are all the pieces I need to make this, uh, make these greetings. I can just turn all the, toggle them all back on again. And there we go, the file looks exactly the same. I haven't changed anything so I don't need to save it. It's ready to go. Okay, so I've got my foil quill on. I did get tired of trying to remember which was the fine and the um, standard and the broad so I've labeled them all with a little bit of vinyl have scan and cut can cut okay first time I'm first up is I'm going to import the file okay so we've got them there now I want this to um, fill so I'm going into object edit now I have it grouped so it's going to fill it all at once. If they're not grouped you'll have to do them individually. Let's press OK um, and I'll go in and you can just see little lines across there but it will fill it so that's how you know it's done. Okay. Okay so let's just go out a bit from the camera so you can see the whole machine. Okay, there we go. I'm just going to insert the, the quill. Yeah. It helps if you put it in the right way. There we go. I'm just going to sit down on top. That will work for me. Now the first thing I'm going to do is load my magnetic mat. This will work as long as you have all of your lines perfectly lined up, I had to reload my magnetic mat. Hold the magnetic net just underneath while it loads. Okay, so I've got some paper here. Now, I'm going to lay that at the 2 inch and 1 inch mark. Because that's when I want to lay it on the cutting mat. So I'm just laying that there. I'm laying down the foil right on that edge. Now notice I've got a couple of scratches in the foil. So I'm just going to scan, which I normally do anyway, just to make sure 
that it's fitting in where I've got it. So I'm just going to go back and I'm going to scan. This is just ensuring the placement is all right. And my words are where the foil is going to go. And hopefully, I just, I'm just going to go in only because I want to make sure I haven't got anywhere where the scratches are. No, I haven't. So that's good. I'm just flatten that out a bit. Okay. 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 So now we're going to select draw. I just use the standard settings. Um, except it is on speed 5, so I might just slow it down to 3. Um, so I use the auto pressure and the speed of 3. The foil coil has been heating long enough, so I'm just going to tell it to start. It's all filled, it's all ready to go. It's going to take seven minutes, so we'll return shortly. This is coming to the end now. Of course, you can get a foil on a cutting mat. Um, the problem I found with the cutting mat is that you have to play with the pressure quite a bit so that it doesn't um, stick to the mat. That's why I like the magnetic plate or even just a metal shim from your cuddle bug or something similar. You can, I have another video on using that. That works just fine too. Okay, so I'm just going to remove these and I just want to double check that I've got it where I've got it on the mat here, just inside the two inch that side, right on the one inch that side. Okay, so they've all foiled beautifully. So I'm just going to eject that mat and change to the cutting mat. And if you're doing it all on one mat, you would not eject the mat at all. You would just keep it in the same place. I'm just going to unplug it and remove the quill. I'm putting in the cat mat. I find it easier when I want to cut these to put the mat in first and lay that down. Okay, so I'm going to go home and I'm going to retrieve the data. Okay, so I've got the cutting file on there and I'm just going to scan this and then I'm going to zoom in so you can see the what I do from here. So let's have a look. Oops, sorry. Oh, this camera is... There we go. Okay. Now I've got the text. Now I'm going to go into the edit screen. I'm going to go into the thing and I'm going to blow it right up. If I've laid it in the right place should be pretty right but we'll just have a quick look make sure we're happy with it all I am I'm not even going to move that but you can move it around if you have to but um, I have found that if I take care where I lay it I don't have any problems so this is a cut while that's cutting I'm going to send the vellum file over so we'll just go out again that's cut so we can lift that off I'm not going to take my mat out I'm just going to lay the vellum on the top of it on remove these I will show you that one I'm hoping that's I'm zooming in on it so there's the hello And there's the get well soon. Okay, so now I'm going to cut some vellum to go around that. So I've got a piece of vellum here. 
and I've put the vellum pieces on the mat up in the corner so I can go there but if I'm not sure I can scan of course I'm going to retrieve the data now because it's the auto blade I don't, it's still got my other scanner I'm not worried about that because it's the auto blade I don't have to adjust it so I'm going to click OK I'm going to select cut and press start and then I'm going to send the foam pieces over. Now, I am going to tape down my piece of foam, so I've got some masking tape ready. Perfectly cut from the vellum. Just be careful how you pick it up so you don't tear it, because it is very fine. Okay, now, I've got the foam. I've put the pattern sort of an inch in and an inch down, so I've got a bit of room. I, I, you can use um, Express It, make a double-sided sticky foam, but I usually just buy foam on eBay and add um, tape to both sides. And I use the rolls of tape that you can buy for um, doing di uh, intricate die cuts. I have found that any need to tape it either top or bottom, that's enough. Okay, so let's go home again. Um, retrieve the data. That is poking up, it's a bit smaller than what I usually use to cut, so I'm just going to put a piece on the bottom as well. It's better to be sure than sorry, in my opinion. Okay. It's about an inch in, about an inch down. That should be fine, but I'm going to scan it just to make 100% sure I've got it sitting on top of it. I think more annoying than cutting something in the wrong place. And that's the beauty of the scan and cut. You can check. Oh, yes, there's plenty in there. Okay, because this is uh, foam, it will probably, it will do at least two cuts and possibly three. Now, if you don't have the auto blade, if you have a CM model, I would suggest you work, you test cut and do at least two passes, if not three. When it's cut, it just pops out. I must admit, I'd never tried cutting the foam until I had the SDX model. So, and it just makes an absolute breeze and I can get the foam any shape I want. And I use it a lot. Mm -hmm. well, looks like it's happy with two cuts. Making sure you pick up the whole piece of um, tape so you don't get it caught on your scanner. And they just pop out like that. Now I'm going to put these together and I'll bring them back and show you. There is of course no right, right or wrong way to put these together. But usually what I do is just run a bit of double sided tape on the back of the word. And then eyeball the centre. If I'm worried about whether I will do it, I will lay the uh, a straight edge. A bit hard with these circles, but I'll lay the straight edge on something straight on the vellum, like so. These long ones, I tend to do the ends as well. Okay, so 
I know I've got five mils all round. It's a bit hard for you to see the bell on there, but as long as I get even, it's a little off. As you can see, you can take it off if you do it straight away and you've got good double-sided tape. So let's just... No, 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 no. <laughs> do it too many times and you need to change your bell. That's about where I want it, I think. It's not going straight now. I'm sure everybody else has these problems, but... What I'm going to do... Is lie that down and sit the vellum over it. I can see through the vellum roughly where it is. Oh, that's better. So now it's a bit hard for you to see that there, so I'm just looking around close to me here to see if I've got anything with colour in it so you can see it. My poor old mouse mat. And I'll just zoom in so that you can see them. Oh, pretty much zoomed in. So there you go. That's what they look like. Oops, they're not, not focusing there, is it? It's too much light from outside. Let's just try that. There you go. They've turned out really well. And now I've got them ready. Oh, except I forgot to put the um, foam on. So that's just a matter of making sure the foam is where the cardstock is. So that you can hide it. Very easy. Because you've cut it, you've cut it with a 5mm allowance. See there that I don't even have that one dead straight but it does not show on the other side and they're now ready to use on a card. I do have a couple that I've put on other cards. So let me quickly find one of them. <clears throat> Here's one I put on a card that um, on alcohol ink and you can see it turns out really well. So I hope you have fun and give it a try. Thank you.